from what, the, what God has mentioned to us. And now we understand that we are to be unified in love with one another. That's unquestioned. But God, Christ has called us to have a biblical unity. A unity that is founded on his word. Now anyone can unify for whatever reason. We can figure out something to, to justify unity among us. But the one thing that Christ has wanted us to unify around is around doctrine. Is around what we believe. Remember in John chapter 17 that I read earlier, it says that Jesus was praying for unity for us, that we would believe based upon their message. Their message is the apostles. And we know from Acts chapter 2 verse 42 that the church devoted themselves to the apostles' message. And remember, we read in John chapter 17 also that he wants us to not only have the, that Christ and the Father are one, but he wants us to have oneness with with God and Christ. Now how can we have unity with God and Christ? Well, in, by living in subjection to the word of God. Because the whole, Peter made known in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 to 21, that the Holy Spirit inspired the New Testament prophets and apostles to write down the word of God. So the Holy Spirit's not going to ever go against anything against his word. He would be dividing his house and that wouldn't be able to stand. But one of the things that we, he made known through his New Testament apostles and prophets through his word is this is how he wants you to live. This is how he wants you to believe. And this is why we have everything we need for life and godliness. We read through this word and we understand if we're going to have this unity with God and Jesus, as Jesus prayed about, then we've got to have it in relation to the word of God. Because it's based on that message. And the, and the teachings of Christ are never going to run contrast to that unity of the Spirit. And so look at some of the foundational doctrines that, that Paul has listed. These are things that should be the core foundations about God and the, our faith that we should be living upon. That bring us together. That help us to have that one mind. And it's that, what, that, that Holy Spirit is responsible for the word of God. And so he makes known these are the doctrines we want that he wanted you to believe in. These are the basis of our unity. Let's read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 through 6. It says, Nor, oh, sorry, wrong chapter. It says, There is one body and one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And so those are the foundational doctrines. Look at how what we see here. We see all three members of the Godhead mentioned here. We see that the Holy Spirit is mentioned. We see that God the Father is mentioned. And we see Jesus in the title of Lord is mentioned. And so we are first founded on God. But then we also see that there's one church. There's, by saying there's one body. There's not a whole bunch of churches. There should be one church. But then it also mentions some key elements of this understanding of God and of his church. That there is this one faith, one hope, and one baptism. See, those are foundational things. Those are all essential. Are those things necessary for salvation? Is God the Father necessary for salvation? Yes. Is the Holy Spirit necessary for salvation? Yes. Is Jesus necessary for salvation? Yes. Is faith necessary? Yes. Is the church necessary? Yes. Is hope necessary? Yes. Is baptism necessary? Yes. Those are the core foundations, doctrinal, that we have that bring us to that one like mind and one thought. You see, we don't just unify on the basis of wanting unity. We unify on God and His Word, on His doctrines. And this is where we say that we, have, we can't compromise. That's one of the reasons why almost every book in the New Testament speaks against false teachers and false doctrine and having sound doctrine. Because if we are to have unity with God and Jesus, then we have to have unity with His message. Because if we didn't have unity with this message, we can't have unity with God the Father or with Jesus. That wouldn't make sense. And we know since the Holy Spirit is responsible for the Word of God, we see the unity of the Spirit is unity of His work, which is the Word of God. And so we understand that we want to have unity and love. We understand the importance and value of it. I honestly believe if we will actually obey the commands 
of Christ to make every effort to unify, to treat each other in these ways, to have unity of the Spirit as Christ has called us, we would make known to all people, we'd make known to all the people in Moses' like that we are His disciples. And that we would give evidence instead of people looking at us and saying, you're hypocrites, you're insincere in your faith, you're not making a difference. We would actually show them the love that has changed our lives, that transformed us into Christ's likeness. We would be unified. And because of that, instead of seeing hypocrisy, they would say evidence and justification that God really did send Jesus. God has called us to be unified. God has called us to love one another. This is why we are to make every effort to make diligence, to work hard, to be committed to these things. Because that's what Christ has called us to do. Christ has commanded us to. And when we obey that command, we'll actually be blessed beyond measure, more than we could have ever thought. God has blessed us with one another and with a relationship with Him. And so as we think about how we want to grow as a congregation, as we want to do God's will, we understand that we want to glorify God by being disciples and making disciples. And we will do so by seeking a biblical unity and a family-oriented love for one another.